Hi, this is Hannah at Seattle Findings. Today we're going to be looking at a number of different products offered by Jax Chemical and the finishes that they can apply to copper, brass, and aluminum. So we've prepared some different metals here to test these products on. Some of them are flat and some of them are textured with hammering, fold forming, or rolling. Um, patinas lend themselves particularly well to bringing out textures, so I thought it might be good to highlight that a little bit in this video. When working with these, you're also going to want some disposable brushes and disposable containers because patinas can be kind of messy. The first patina I'm going to introduce you to is the Flemish Gray Black. So this is one of three different oxidizing or darkening patinas that I'm going to show in this video. Um, so this one isn't your standard blackening solution. It has a bit of a lighter color. It's a bit more gray. Uh, it might be good for making maybe a fake pewter sort of finish if that's something that you're interested in going for. It's great for sculptural uses, it's great for adding a sort of aged or tarnished look to jewelry. So here's the final result. As you can see it's a little bit like silvery colored. Next we're going to do the Jax Brown. So this one's also a great one for a more natural looking tarnish finish. So it's an oxidizer that leans a little warmer in color. And another thing you'll find is that these will give you a little bit more uniform of a finish if you dunk them in the metal instead of brushing it on like I'm doing in the video. And I'll show you that in just a moment. So this video is sped up a little bit, but as you can see, this is a pretty fast acting solution. Uh, you don't have to let it sit for a long time. So here's our final comparison between the black and the brown. As you can see, the black's a little darker and a little bit cooler in color. And here it is on the brass. I've also included a shot where I have sanded off a little bit on the textured area so you can see how the patina can give a texture some depth. So next I decided to submerge the metals to get a more even finish. These are the backs of them so you can see that they are not darkening evenly in the clip. That's just because they weren't cleaned on the backs. The front of the copper one turned out pretty good. It's a nice even dark black finish. The brass however did not turn out great and this is probably because the metal was not cleaned enough or it was left in the solution for too long. I'm just including this clip to show you obstacles that you might encounter. I cleaned the metal up and I tried it again and it turned out just fine. It's got a nice even black finish. The next chemical I'm going to show you is the Jax Silver Plating Solution. And this one, I'd like to warn you, has a little bit of a harsh smell. Um, I would recommend wearing a respirator or using this in a location that you have good ventilation. Um, so this plates a thin layer of silver onto your metal. It's not going to have as good of a plating as, say, an electroplating setup, but it does give you a decent finish. So here we have it with one coat, and you can still see the metal through it, but once you start adding additional coats, it definitely layers quite well and starts looking like silver. So as you can see, the finish gets more and more convincing as we get further to the right. Uh, I think that this finish is great for sculptural uses or for anything that's not going to be handled regularly. A lot of jewelry, this isn't going to stand up to in time. I wouldn't recommend plating an entire ring with this. I would recommend going with electroplating as this plating is quite thin. However, the effect is really convincing. It does look quite like silver and it is plating a real layer of silver onto the metal. So one of Jax's most popular patinas is Jax Green and this is an interesting verdigris finish um, that gives it a powdery greenish, tealish, bluish color. Um, this one takes a little while to dry. I think I left it for about two hours since it was pooled in the recesses of this fold formed copper. So here's some shots of how it looked as it was drying. And uh, in the upcoming shot, please excuse my dirty fingers. I'd been touching the aluminum blackener finish. And by the way, I recommend wearing gloves with these. They're not actually safe on skin. Don't be an idiot like me. Speaking of the aluminum blackener, that's what we have next. Uh, it has a really interesting chemical reaction as it sits in the solution. It starts bubbling and fizzing. Um, it gets really dark, but it has it se almost seems corrosive and it has this weird powdery black stuff on it that comes off really easy. 
So I don't recommend doing surfaces with this, but if you do any like stamping of aluminum blanks, I think it's great for darkening inside of stamps. Um, but the, the residue isn't fun. Next, we're going to use the gold finish on aluminum, and I particularly like this one. It has a really interesting color change that happens. The solution starts purple and then it turns green, but it's turning your metal gold. Um, I think this one would be better off soaked than brushed like I'm doing in this clip. As you can see, the areas where the, the liquid pools, it leaves a little bit different color, so it would probably be more uniform if it was just soaked in the liquid instead of brushed on like this. So here's that final finish. As you can see, it's a little uneven. I think in the future I'm going to try dunking this to see how uh, even the finish can be. I really like how it looks in the texture, though, when you polish it off the top. I think that's an interesting, an interesting finish. So let's take a quick look at some of the finishes we've done so far. So this is the black, the brown, and the Flemish gray black, so you can compare their colors. Um, I'd also like to mention that they have a silver blackener that's very similar to the black on the left. If you want to do like a natural tarnish, I definitely recommend the brown. It looks like naturally tarnished copper. So here we have the Flemish gray black again, and I've got this other little hexagon piece that has it at a higher shine, so you can see what it looks like when the metal's properly polished. Also, it's fun to experiment with splatter effects and other things with these sometimes. So here's the final results of the green finish. Sometimes it tends more towards this greener color and sometimes it tends more towards teal and I'm not exactly sure what factors play into that. Here are some samples I did a while back that are a lot brighter of a teal color and have a lot less green. So here's the aluminum blackener. As you can see, it's a little corrosive, I think. It has made some pock marks in the metal that I don't think were there before. Another great Jax product is their copper cleaner. If you oxidize some copper or brass and you don't like the finish, it's really easy to get it off with this stuff. You just kind of scrub it around in there for a second and it comes off real quick. So I sort of recorded this as a little bit of a bonus, but another product that Jax has is this Dichroic FX Black, which is an oxidizer that produces a sort of like oil spill finish maybe. It's a little tricky to get right, like getting the timing right to give it a, a proper colorful finish. Here it is next to the regular black. Um, I tried this a few times, a few different coats, refinishing the metal, trying again to get it right. So I've found that perhaps the best way to do it is to apply it quickly and rinse it quickly, but you've got to do it in sort of layers going outward to get the full spectrum of the colors that it offers. Uh, you don't want to over darken it because it kind of just winds up turning black or gray. So that's all we have for this video. Um, if you want to see any other different Jax products or any other specific uses for these Jax products, um, let us know and we might do that. Patinas definitely have a wider range of uses than we've shown here, and I would be interested in hearing about any specific techniques or uses that you have for these products. Um, we're also trying to pull together a frequently asked questions about Jax, because we do get a lot of questions about what Jax products are suitable for what metals or what situations, and um, we would like to sort of compile some information about that. So if you like to work with these products, um, would love to hear what you think about them and what you use them for. Feel free to give us a follow on social media. We're pretty active on Instagram, at Seattle Findings. Sometimes we announce exclusive sales there. Sometimes we do partnership with influencers in the metalsmith community. It's worth checking out.